What's going on everyone, it's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Wednesday, August the 16th, 2023. In this update, we have a lot to talk about. We have three areas to now watch in the Atlantic. Plus, we're going to keep an eye on Tropical Storm Hillary as it could bring quite a bit of rain for the desert southwest and California. So here's a look at the true color visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. And we have three areas to watch. Really, the one that we are watching is area of interest number three. That has a 20% chance. We'll be looking at the NHC here in just a second. But this is going to be moving into the Gulf of Mexico where it could encounter more favorable conditions. And then, of course, we have area of interest number one and two that are lurking out there in the main development region. These two could also develop into tropical systems within the next seven days as they move off towards the west-northwest. So the background state, folks, is becoming better favorable for tropical systems, and we do expect that since it is mid-August. So here's a look at the National Hurricane Center. Let's actually do it that way. There we go. So we have, again, these two areas, a 40% chance in the next seven days if I can get my face out of the way here so you all can see this briefly there it is a 30 to 40 percent chance of tropical formation there with disturbance two and a 30 50 with disturbance one and then of course a lot of folks here live along the gulf coast here of the united states and mexico that is a big area that we really have to monitor because we could see a scenario here where we do get sneaky tropical development. So right on we go with our global computer models that I like to show you all. Because again, there's a lot to talk about. So we're going to first look at the Caribbean, the southwestern Atlantic, and of course the Gulf of Mexico. Because we have a tropical wave. This is, by the way, for Friday night into Saturday morning, August the 18th and the 19th. We have an envelope of energy right in here. See this tropical wave, this kind of wave pocket? That is vorticity. That's the amount of spin that is expected on the Euro model for Friday night into Saturday at 850 millibars. Going forward, let's take this a little further out into Sunday afternoon and evening. Yes, that is a signature, folks, of a very well-defined tropical wave. Maybe something more significant than what this is showing. Of course, we're looking at the global computer model, and this is not a hurricane-trained model by any means. And then we have another area of interest over here approaching the Eastern Caribbean Basin. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely things are getting going, and that means we're here all day long or every day updating you on the tropics. And then what happens here by Monday night, August the 21st, there is that wave pocket. Very, very well defined. Not a closed circulation by any means. Because we don't have any contours here that indicate a closed surface low. But I'll tell you what. it At this point, it could be a tropical wave that is very well defined. Not a tropical depression to cause enormous heavy rainfall. I mean, epic rainfall proportions could be possible around the Texas panhandle. Not panhandle, but to the south there. Louisiana, maybe Mississippi, Alabama. We have to watch this one like a hawk because we never know with sea surface temperatures at 32 celsius even 33 celsius there in the north eastern gulf of mexico this could spin up very very quickly should the atmosphere become more favorable than what is currently forecasted all right so there's another area of disturbing weather that could be possible on the euro by Monday next week and then going forward here that kind of breaks off eventually now very interesting that the euro wants a brown ocean effect possible over Texas by the middle of next week I don't know we'll see right there's a lot of moisture that has been over that area for a while a lot of humid air a lot of moisture coming off the Gulf so it wouldn't surprise me if we do see something like that now we're gonna zoom out and take a look at the entire Atlantic because we're just going to kind of fast forward this into day four since we pretty much kind of covered what's going to happen over here in the next five to six days. 
We have tropical waves that are developing right now. We have another one coming off of Africa that we do need to watch closely. And then as we go forward here out to day seven, this is for Wednesday, August the 23rd. Yep, we have more disturbances off of Africa that we will have to monitor. We have a nice, good, big wave of energy right here in the northwestern and southwestern Caribbean. Some of the models, like the Canadian and the GFS, want to get that spinned up or spin it up really vigorously. So again, another thing just to be mindful of when we are kind of trickling into the getting closer to the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season is to watch what goes on out here because we all know a favorable period is on its way and it will be a matter of time which of these waves really develops pretty vigorously. The GFS model, this is a look at um, the next four or so days. And we, again, we are looking at these waves coming off of Africa. This one actually near the uh, Cabo Verde Islands may not develop all that well, actually. There's some Saharan dust that it might encounter. But the one in the southwest could develop pretty substantial. And that's why the NHC has a 50, not a 40 on it in the next seven days. And then... There is the area in the Gulf that we really have to pay close attention to. Even so, it doesn't look like a, anything that would be significant. You just never know. We saw it with Hannah. Remember how a lot of the models were indicating that maybe a little bit of a tropical wave that could transverse the Gulf of Mexico and not do much? Well, Hannah ended up being a Category 1 hurricane near the southern Texas-Mexico border. So we really got to watch these just because they're not significant on the models does not mean it's something to ignore. All right, the Canadian model or the gym model, we want to compare a lot of models. You can see there's the Canadian indicating that disturbance in the Gulf. Wow, it really wants to go ballistic with our system. Um, disturbance number two, that is, or no, wait, disturbance one, that is becoming a formidable tropical storm, if not a hurricane, and then maybe a couple more coming off of Africa. This would be for early next week. By the middle of next week, we would be looking at, I mean, good grief. It wants a system here. It wants a system here. It wants a system here, maybe here. And yeah, like, I mean, it has, there's five areas on the Canadian going ballistic, going like nothing ever before. And then eventually if we go out to 10 days, rarely do I want to do that. There it is. The impetus of what could be a really formidable system okay so now we're going to transition and look at our ensembles i always like showing you all this because this is pretty important a lot of the ensembles are definitely from the euro indicating that these two systems do have potential of becoming a tropical depression or storm we really have to watch in the gulf with our ensemble there indicating maybe a tropical depression or tropical storm see just because the operational or the control run that is one model doesn't indicate much its ensembles indicate that this could be a 45 to 55 mile an hour tropical storm off the coast of louisiana and texas so we are not ignoring the gulf by any means whatsoever we're also not going to ignore on how warm the sea surface temperatures are across the atlantic basin i mean this is very ironically concerning water temperatures again i've said this many times right around 30 to 32 Celsius, maybe even eclipsing 33 Celsius, right off the coast there of Tampa, Florida, Cape Coral, Florida, might even see some islands in here that are 33 Celsius. And that is low 90s in Fahrenheit with those water temperatures. And I'm telling you, it only takes one. And if the atmosphere cooperates, and you better hope it doesn't, we could be looking at a very big disaster. We could be looking at something that we have not seen since Hurricane Ian of last year or Dorian back in 2017 something. I can't even remember all my names. Or no, wait, 2019 that was, Hurricane Dorian was. You get the idea. I mean, very intense hurricanes cannot be ruled out and the water temperatures definitely favor that right now in much of the Atlantic and especially the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. It only takes one to really cause a national disaster on a extreme ironic note. 
Now, what is very ironic is the upper ocean heat content that is lurking across the northwestern portion of the Caribbean into the Gulf. I mean, these upper ocean heat content values are absolutely uncharted, off the charts, very concerning. If anything moves over this area, you better hope it doesn't under a very favorable environment because if it does, it is going to spin up very quickly and we all don't want that to occur because if it does, you better get out of harm's way as quickly as you can because there is going to be, if there is, it would bring a lot of rainfall, a lot of high um, PWAP values. That's the amount of water in the atmosphere. <sighs> yeah. All right. So we're going to transition really quickly back to the NHC again because we have our little friend, not a little friend by any means. It's not going to be little for too much longer. We have Tropical Storm Hillary. And the reason why I'm talking about Hillary is this could bring absolute, absolute devastating floods on an extreme modern record scale if this impacts the way it is. And I'm going to show you the global computer models here in just a second. 40 mile an hour tropical storm Hillary right now, not going to impact Mexico or central Mexico, might get close to Baja, California, but it's our friends up here in California, Southern California, Central California, even um, Arizona, like maybe Phoenix, Arizona, maybe Las Vegas, Lake Has uh, Havazu, I think that's how you say it, boy, we could be looking at inches of rainfall and some pretty serious flooding if the global computer models continue to agree. Before we get to that though, this is a look at the NHC track from the National Hurricane Center on Hillary. We're looking at a major hurricane uh, by this weekend and let's see how strong this gets because if it does get stronger, it might want to go further just a hair to the west and boy, if it's stronger to begin with, I imagine on how much rainfall and wind SoCal could get the likely chances of seeing tropical storm force winds across Los Angeles, maybe portions of Santa Monica uh, or San Monica, I should say, and say San Diego are pretty low, but you never know. I mean, there's an S there, which means post-tropical uh, storm um, Hillary here by Monday morning next week, and, and this could cause a lot of problems. Okay, so now we're going to take a look here. Go to the euro model because the euro has been really consistent and pretty concerning on this so i always like looking at the, uh, the moisture plot here this is in the deep layers and i want to kind of give you a rundown let's go back here of course so here is hillary's moisture remnants that are going to be fed into the desert southwest because we have a deep layer ridge here in the midwest and a trough of low pressure along the coast so um, the, these two air masses are just going to allow to uh, allow Hillary, Hillary's moisture to get shoved northward between these two air masses and not just the desert southwest, but this might even get involved in, say, California. Let's put this forward. This is for Saturday, so nothing going on Saturday. Sunday looks to be fine, but look at all the moisture here, deep layer moisture from about, say, 10,000 feet all the way up to 32,000 feet and... While that doesn't seem like a whole lot, I have something else to share with you all. Let's take a look at the H-Wharf parent model run on Hillary. And this gives us a pretty good idea of how much moisture you could expect. All these greens on your screen indicate very rich moisture in the deep layers. This is going to go up and cause problems like, look at this, the Bay Area of California, Santa Cruz, Big Sur, Fresno, Sacramento, Stockton. I mean, if this comes to pass, let's just kind of pretend that if this comes true, wow, we're going to have a lot of rain to deal with and some flooding, mudslides, that sort of thing. And we're not supposed to see that in August, but occasionally once in a while or once in a century at this point, we can get something really significant. And that's how it's shaping up to being um, this go around. All right, folks, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. I sure hope I did very well in today's video. I try to keep these videos short, and I think I'm going to try to keep this video under 15 minutes. Anyways, if you did like it, please consider subscribing, sharing, and leaving a comment in the section below. And I'll be back with you more, hopefully tomorrow, with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion. A lot to talk about these days.